is Tim Hodges with a quick video about how to calculate the surface area of a solid of revolution in parametric coordinates. And we're going to do it for the asteroid. So remember, the asteroid is given by, in parametric coordinates, by x equals a cosine cubed t, y equals a sine cubed t. So notice how this traces out as t varies. When t is equal to 0, x is equal to a. So this is the case where a equals 1 here. So when t is equal to 0, x is equal to a, and y is equal to 0, so we're here. As t varies between 0 and pi over 2, cosine t gradually reduces to 0, so the x-coordinate moves down to 0, and the y-coordinate gradually moves from 0 up to 1. So we see the point moves along this curve, and ends up here at t equals pi over 2. Then as t varies from pi over 2 to pi, sine will decrease again from 1 down to 0. So the y-coordinate will gradually decrease from 1 to 0. And the x-coordinate, because it's cosine cubed, uh, will go from 0 to minus 1. So x will go from 0 to minus a. So again, we'll see our point moving along this curve, ending at this point when t is equal to pi. So continuing like this, this is the point where t is equal to 3 pi over 2, 2 pi, etc. And then if we let t continue to grow, we'll just loop around the asteroid many times. Now, we want to calculate the surface area of the solid of revolution we get when we rotate this asteroid around the x-axis. So rotating this around the x-axis gives us a shape like this, like a spinning top, and we want to find the surface area. Now, we're going to end up actually just calculating the surface area of one of the pieces, one of the sides of this. Turns out that that's, this is a little easier. So that corresponds to the uh, the solid that we get by rotating this part of the curve between uh, around the x-axis. So notice that that's between t equals 0 and t equals pi over 2. So it's very important to establish this range of values of t because we're going to need to substitute this into this formula. So remember, this is the formula for the surface area. These are the the limits here, alpha and beta, are the two values of t that define the endpoints of the curve. So we're going to need alpha to be 0 and beta to be pi over 2. And then we're just going to have to, we just need to substitute for these, for y and these derivatives with the corresponding function of t. So let's look at what that is. Well, the parametric equations are a cosine cubed t, a sine cubed t. So the derivatives are minus 3a cosine squared sine t and 3a sine squared cosine t. And so now let's have a look at the calculation. So the actual area of the whole surface of revolution on the previous page is going to be twice the integral from 0 to pi over 2. This is the surface area of one half of that solid. So we have 2 pi times y a sine cubed t times the square root of the squares of these derivatives, which gives us that. And then let's pull the 4 pi a, the 2 pi a out the front to give us 4 pi a. And then we look inside the square root and we see that there's a common factor of 9 a squared cosine squared t sine squared t. The first one is, is that number multiplied by cosine squared, and the second one is that number multiplied by sine squared. So if we take that out, it becomes, out of the square root, it becomes 3a sine t cosine t. And notice that sine t cosine t is always positive on this interval. This is why it's easier to do it like this than try to do it as an integral from 0 to pi. So this is what we have now when we pull out this factor. 
the remaining term is the square root of cosine squared t plus sine squared t, which is, of course, 1. So everything simplifies. Pulling out the 3a, we get 12a squared pi times the integral from 0 to pi over 2, sine to the 4th t cosine t. Now this is an easy integral. The antiderivative of sine to the 4th is sine to the 5th t. So we just have to evaluate 12a squared pi sine to the 5th t over 5 between 0 and pi over 2. Sorry, that should be pi over 2. So at pi over 2, sine to the 5th t is 1. At 0, it's 0. So we end up just with 12 pi a squared over 5. So this is an interesting example of how to apply this formula to find areas of surfaces of revolution. Of course, as you can imagine, as in the Cartesian case, often this formula gives a very complicated integrand that we can't uh, integrate using easy techniques. However, in this case, it works very nicely and gives us a very good illustrative example that also gives us a very pleasant formula for the surface area of this solid.